Dave Ping 243. Hello guys, this is me, Dave Pink 243 and welcome back to some more Yu-Gi-Oh! Duelist of the Roses. Last time, we faced off against Bandit Keith and Labyrinth Ruler. We took both of their white rose cards. Um, since last time, I moved myself up towards the screen a little bit more so I could actually kind of see, like, actual card effects. Because before, like... When it came to that shift card, I was just like, eh, what was it? It's like, like, I looked back at the recording, I was like, oh my god, I, I, I totally misread that card. I am sorry, folks, but, um, hopefully that shit doesn't really happen anymore, but, um, but, uh, unfortunately, I did not modify my deck off screen, but I will go ahead and do so right now, so, um, you might hear me a little bit more because I'm closer to the mic now. So I guess it doubles in uh, goodness. Uh, I also lowered down the game audio a little bit since last time, so maybe maybe things will work out a bit better overall. Um, but yeah, I need to get rid of some of my better cards to face off against uh, Necromancer. Um... Let's see, uh, Sword Stalker is too good to get rid of, um... Uh, I could afford to get rid of Gravity Bind, I have a suitable replacement, uh, in the form of Tears of the Mermaid. And let me see, um... I suppose I can afford to... Um... To off red eyes for the meantime. Uh, let's put Trachodon, a uh, Trachodon in this uh, deck, and. Let's, uh, hmm. See, and that's a tough thing, right? Uh, I guess I'll get rid of Pumpkin for, for, I guess, um, I guess Mechanical Spider? Uh, it's still not quite... Uh, low enough deck cost, um... Let's get rid of Armored Blizzard for Skull Stalker. Yeah, that'll do. Um, and maybe they'll also let me uh, be able to do some fusion shenanigans with that. Since it's a warrior. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and save the game. Uh, yeah, this is why I hate uh, opponents to have lower deck costs than the, than the norm, because... Um, with stuff like 795 deck costs, like, I really have to limit my own options in order to even face off against said opponent. Uh, there'll be one other case later on in the game in the White Rose side where I will have to face against, uh... Uh, a duelist who has an even more, an even lower deck cost than this. And yeah, it's particularly, particularly infuriating there. But, um, yeah, how about we go face off against Necromancer, aka Bones? Since now I actually do have a low enough deck cost in order to face off against him. And then next I will face against Pegasus, which that duel will be a big pain in the ass. 
So yeah, um, so over here we got a bunch of meadow. Uh, this powers up your warriors, uh, beast warriors, stuff like that. And also there's sea terrain, which powers up fish, uh, sea serpents, thunders. I, I do believe. Let's see, um... Yeah, I know- I knew there was two fuse, um, into being soldier, alright. Uh, not exactly an upgrade. Especially not on the wasteland. Let's see, uh, I think- I think Bones did a fusion, I wasn't really paying attention. Okay. Um... Okay, no, uh, he just placed a card? I'm... God, I wasn't paying attention at all, um... I guess I'll move Bean Soldier up here, maybe provoke an attack from him? Okay, he's moving up forward, um... Obviously not going to put Bean Soldier into the wasteland, because that would be a bad idea, but what I can do is... Actually, wait. I'll move Bean Soldier over here, and then activate Mountain as I move it over here, because that's going to be more towards in his area. So that way I can at least get rid of some of his advantage. And, since... Since, uh, Bones, uh, focuses on zombies, his monsters are actively powered down on Mountain, so... That's doubly good for me. Um, and his deck leader is Pump King, the King of Ghosts. Uh, it's a great card, and it's of the Colonel ranking. Um, so, extended support range. Um, it's not really specific on how it works, but it, there's also increased strength for same type friendly, so. All of the zombie monsters are going to get another 500 points in attack and defense if they're near his summoning area, if they're around the summoning area, so, yeah, um, they'll be effectively 1,000 points stronger when, uh, when pump- when his pumpkin deck leader is on the wasteland, and they are within the summoning area. That- that's pretty fucking strong, but, um, So, let's get rid of these crap cards, because I don't need them. And let's put down- oh, those Sufus, okay, uh... That actually would've been, wouldn't have been bad, but, uh, Sky Dragon's just better, so let's see what this thing is. Wood remains! And it's weakened on Mountain, so... Yeah, uh, gains 500 attack and defense for every wood remains, since that was the only one. It only gains 500, so... I did a good amount of damage to him already. And maybe I could go and attack its... Okay, Beam's Hand, okay. I don't particularly care about Beam Soldier, so... That's fine. That's fine if you destroy it. Alright, and... I guess on my turn. It's already down to 1800 life points. Uh, quite happy about that. Um, let's see here. Uh, either way, I'll have a 1700 attack body on board, so I'll just defuse. Um, well, I would have had, um, I would have had a 1900 body, but I guess that hardly matters, so. Let's see what this thing is. Skull Servant? Really? 
Uh, it powered itself up by 300 points. Um, maybe I should show off its effect really quick. So, with this card swift based up, all skull, skull Serpents are increased by 300 points. So, since that was the only one, it... Yeah, uh... Am I going to beat him already? Oh my god. I whooped Bones' ass. I completely whooped his ass. That was like a one-sided duel. Like... <laughs> I can't believe it. And oh, Pumpkin, I want an extra Pumpkin. Um, a second Fiend's Hand actually wouldn't be that bad either. Uh... Uh, Alan section. Okay, a fiend's hand. Ah, oh, I was off by one. Are you kidding me? Okay, I got a fake trap. Fake trap is always going to be in the graveyard slots by default because you gotta have something in the graveyard slots, but if none of your opponent's cards hit the graveyard by the time you beat them, uh, you don't even get a graveyard slot, so yeah. Wow, I completely whooped his ass. That was really easy. Usually he's a big pain in the ass. If he brings out Pumpkin and all that. But I... As you saw there, I completely whooped his ass by putting down the mountain. And not even doing it with my best dragon monsters either. That's quite something. Uh, but now... I'm forced to face off against Pegasus next, and he's going to be a big pain in the ass. So, unfortunately, um, that means I can put in all my all of my good cards because um because he has a he has a deck cost of like over 1,200. So, yeah, uh, I doubt I'll have my deck cost be that high. So. So that means I can put in all my powerful shit and I feel pretty good about that. Um, so Meteor Dragon is finally going to hit the main deck. Um, it's mainly there to fuse with Rise Black Dragon in order to uh, get Meteor Black Dragon, one of the best monsters in the game. See, I'm going to put Mystical Elf in there to power up my light monsters. The few that I have, anyway. I'm going to get rid of Mystic Lamp so I can put back in Pumpkin. Let's see, get rid of this trash for Brachial Radius. So you give her a cock cockroach knife for at least something I could have a decent body. Um, okay, what else can I put in? Uh, I don't really need both Mechanical Spider and Mechanical Snail, so I'll just get rid of the weaker one of the two and put in my Gravity Bind back. Replace that with Crawling Dragon, because it's a better dinosaur. Uh, let's get rid of Petite Dragon for another Fiend's Hand, because I know I'm going to need all the help I can get. With taking out Pegasus' monsters. Because, as I, as I keep saying, Pegasus is very difficult to deal with. Um, as if that 1200-something deck cost isn't any indicate Isn't any form of indication of that. So yeah, um... Yeah, 1254 Dekos, the highest by far we've seen thus far. 
So... So how about we save, and now that I have everything up and ready... Oh wait, do I have Red Ice back in my deck? I, I need to check to make sure, because... Meteor Dragon is basically dead without, um, Red Eyes. Okay, good, I have Red Eyes. Just making sure, because I need all the help I could get. So, Pegasus has all of, P all of his uh, signature tune monsters, as well as some other monsters that are annoying to deal with. Um, and he relies on a special terrain that you'll hardly ever see throughout the rest of the game. The Toon Terrain. So yeah, Seto has told uh, Pegasus about us. And apparently he's also taught him a thing or two, so... Uh, yeah. If Pegasus is this tough, then... I can't imagine how bad so is going to be. But in all seriousness, Pegasus was one of the toughest duels in the game because he has all that toon terrain in his on on his side, and what toon terrain does is that it it powers up all of his toon monsters by 500 points or any monster that is considered to be a toon, and it powers down everything else. So, anything that isn't considered a, a toon monster, it'll lose 500 attack and defense. So, welcome to one of the worst terrains in the entire game to deal with. And he's got himself a little bit of a castle going on here with the with the moat, uh, the drawbridges, and, and the walls in the form of the labyrinth terrain. So, yeah, this is obviously not going to be very easy. Um, fortunately, I have stuff like Curse of Dragon, which are able to turn those, uh, toon terrain squares into, into Wasteland. And a good bit of my deck relies on the Wasteland to be good, so, um, that should be pretty good. Uh, unfortunately, I have a lot of trash here, um, I guess I'll sack it off next turn, um, when I can actually summon out uh, Crystal Dragon, because one thing I haven't uh, said until now is that you, s you see the stars that are like just by the life points, uh, where it says like seven for me. That's my summoning level. Um, basically, now I can summon uh, monsters that are level seven or below. And I can summon out a monster that's so level 7 or below this turn, so now I can summon up Curse of Dragon if I want to, which I will do uh, after I move up, that is. Oh, shit! I, I didn't order that correctly. Fuck! I... You see what happens when you... Uh, not order things incorrectly, um, that will happen. And- Oh! Brain control, that- Well, actually, that might not be so bad, because... If it was Curse of Dragon that would've been brain control, then that would've been really bad. Um... Thankfully... Thankfully, it's just Psychic Kappa. Um... But yeah, a uh, brain control, that's one of Pegasus's many powerful cards. Um See, look at that. 80 deck cost. That is really high. And it says take control of of an opponent's monster that which has the highest attack for one turn. So yeah, uh that gets spell of doom for you if you're not careful. Um I'm going to run over my own second Kappa, uh, Kappa, whatever, and I kind of have shit here, um. So I guess I'll just stick that into the defense field for the time being, uh.
And what Pegasus also really likes to do is that he's, he basically built a wall of cards around himself, uh, aka his deck leader. Uh, half of the time it's going to be trap cards, half of the other time it will be two monsters that are actually pretty powerful, so yeah, ouch. Um, okay, uh, let's move you out of the way, and let's, uh, get that guy over there because that is a useful effect. Okay, that's a monster, and, okay, you're spellbound, buddy. What is it? Um, okay, it's one of his weaker monsters, a stuffed animal. This is not a tune monster, but it's considered to be one in this game. As you can see with the uh, special info. So, it, even though it's not technically a tune monster, it's still considered to be one. So, yeah, instead of being 1200 attack, uh, it's... Or, I guess, uh, 700 if it's not a tomb monster. Is that actually is considered to be a tomb monster, so it is 1700 attack and tomb terrain. Um. Okay, I got Dream Clown. That's not awful. Um. Let's just kind of have uh, Sky Dragon sit there for the time being. Uh, I'm not getting anywhere with this. Um, oh! Um, that's a dinosaur. I could probably fuse it with mechanical scale to get, uh... There we go! So we get Cybersaurus. Uh, let's actually kind of move Sky Dragon back. Maybe to bait him out. Okay, so we'll be stuff animal back. Um, uh, let's see here. Uh, okay, I got I got Sword Stalker. That's pretty good. Um, um, well, let's attack. And uh, it's his own Sword Stalker. Thankfully, he doesn't really have a way of monsters in his graveyard. So, um. That's perfectly fine. And plus I spellbound his ass, so, um... Yeah, um... Swordstalker is actually one of his, uh, non-tomb monsters, so... Thankfully he summoned out pretty early, so it doesn't really have that much power. I, in fact, it doesn't really have any extra power to it. So I'm very lucky it very fortunate that that happened, um, let me see, um, I think I'm just going to put down Dream Clown, just to make sure that that Sword Stalker stays put. Okay, he's going into attack, unlike him. So, welcome the Dream Clown! And, oh, tremendous fire, that- that's going to put me on a clock, because, um... Pegasus has two, maybe three copies of a Tremendous Fire, and basically what that does is that it inflicts 1,000 points of damage to me, so... Um, yeah, that's not good. I need to take out Pegasus quickly. Um, okay, Mystical Elf, that's not horrible, I guess? But, um... Oh boy, uh, let's get Dream Clown out of there so that I can put down. Um. See, the problem is I don't want to throw down Sword Stalker too early, just in case if I, uh, need a lot of damage.
Um. I guess I don't really need Magician of Faith, and. Yeah, let's do that. So, you're about to meet my Sword Stalker. And. There you go. 3100. Okay, that's not bad. If I could just get rid of this Toon Terrain, then that will give me a huge advantage. But as you can see, he's built himself a wall, and... Oh, Mimic Cat, that's also one of his more powerful spells. Um, yeah, the AI goes so fast with choosing things from the graveyard that, uh... You, you don't even get to see what they take out. Um, okay, it wasn't... So he didn't... He didn't get back brain control, that's a little suspect, but, um... So, yeah, um... Mimikat allows him to get a card from either of our graveyards. And use it for his side, so... Uh, yeah, AD Deck Cost is obviously a very powerful card. I could've gotten that card off of the, uh, password system, but... Since it's so overly broken because of that, uh, I didn't want to use it for the Let's Play. But, um, yikes. I can't even begin to imagine what that card is. Um, the one that he actually got out of the, out of, I think it was his graveyard, actually. Um, yikes. I can't really summon much of anything right now because I put in a lot of my, uh, higher level monsters back into the deck. Uh, another tremendous fire. Oh my god. If he plays another one, then I'm screwed. Um. Um. Like, please don't burn me to death, Pegasus. I really don't want that. Okay, let's kind of move Sword Stalker back over here so that I don't make it any of his cards move because every time when he puts down a new card, like I'm, I'm very worried that it's like something like Tremendous Fire. Um, Wall of Illusion is just not very useful right now. Um. Let's get, uh, Kaiser Dragon going, and, well, um, do that. What I really need is Mountain, come on. I have two copies of Mountain in my deck, I should be able to draw into it fairly often. There we go. So, I activate one mountain over here, and if I can just activate my other mountain on the other side, he's going to be really scraping in for some, uh, for any semblance of toon terrain. So, bit by bit, I'm going to be taking away his home field advantage. I guess I could start moving Kaiser Dragon up into the mountain. Okay, and, um... Okay, there we go, and now I can power up, uh, Kaiser Dragon, so now it's on... So, on the mountain, it's 3100, uh, actually 3300, excuse me, and now I can... Well, 
I think Pegasus also has invisible wire as one of his trap cards, so, um... If I can just keep Kaiser Dragon on the mound, like, it'll be unaffected by, uh, invisible wire. So, yeah, uh... Yeah, yeah, just, just, just keep what you have there, and I'll be ready to attack you whenever I have all my things ready. Okay, um... Oh boy, uh... Not really that good, I will... I guess I'll get Pumpkin ready to go, for when I need a gigantic beat stick. So... So I'm just go, going to put Pumpkin in face up defense mode, and it'll gain power a, a little bit for every single turn, and... Um, eventually it's going to be a massive beat stick. Uh, I have five monsters, I need to get rid of my Dream Clown because I don't really need it anymore. Kind of thing with Cybersaurus, like, I, I need more powerful monsters that that can do decently well in the mountain at the very least. And there we go, Pumpkin is now at 1900 attack. Um, See, I'll move Sword Stalker back over here and wait for when I can get another mountain going. Um, okay, power increase. Okay, another dragon treasure, that's fine. Um... Let's start moving my deck leader towards, uh, the other side of... ...a Pegasus' little castle, um... Okay, Pumpkin gets more power, and let's run over, uh, Dream Clown. And let's put down Gravity Bind. But not move it. Because if I'm going to be doing damage to Pegasus, I need, I need to be able to make sure that I can basically one-shot him. Well, or, or at least, like, do away with all of his, uh, life all of his remaining life points in one turn, so... So that he doesn't burn me to, to death with, uh, tremendous fire, um... Let's see, uh, Sword Stalker, move back over here... And I'll just run over this fucking thing because I don't need it. But yeah, if you basically have Pegasus go about like this, then, uh, he's never really going to attack you. Nor will he, like, change up the positioning of his card, so, um, you could, you could take advantage of that. Okay, Tears of the Mermaid, another good card. For me. So I guess I'll have it accompany, uh, Kaiser Dragon. Okay, Fiend's Hand, uh... 
Let's see here. I, I, I guess I'll power up Pumpkin with, uh, with Megamorph. Get Tears of the Mermaid over there, and move my deck layer back over here, just so that I can, uh, put up the other Dragon Treasure. Or wait, maybe I should wait to put uh, the Dragon Treasure onto my newly fused, uh, Meteor Black Dragon. Okay, there's Mountain, okay, um... So let's put down Mountain over on this, onto this other side right here. And on, on my next turn, I'll activate that, and, uh, he's going to be really try trying to find some Tomb Terrain to utilize. Okay, good, no Magic Jammer, so... So yeah, now I basically, uh, ripped apart his Tomb Terrain, and he only has this bit left. So I guess I might as well do the whole zombie thing, so I'll turn my monsters into zombies. I know that they'll get powered down on mountain, but eventually they will become a very large beat stick, so... Um, Kaiser Dragon, I'm actually going to move you back. And... There you go. And I don't need Graveyard Hand anymore, so... Yeah, there you go. So now all three by Beat Six are going to be uh, powered up slowly by Pumpkin. And, um, okay. Yeah, I had a feeling those two fused. Um, oh shit, another pumpkin! I can obviously utilize that. So great, that speeds up the process, and I can get some really huge beat sticks. Okay, uh, Dark Piercing Light, um... Ah, uh, sure, why not, I'll... I'll go and see what his cards is, so show me your cards. Uh, okay, they're all monsters, um, another stuffed animal, Parrot Dragon, a Monger Riran, and Toon Summon Skull, okay. Um... I can just kind of sit here and, um... And basically wait until my beat sticks are at, like, their strong, uh... At any sort of, like, strong attack value, and then I can just, uh... Beat the- beat the ever-living fuck out of this guy. So, okay, looks like I'm going to be able to do the, uh... Actually, in case if the fusion somehow doesn't work, I'm going to go ahead and... Uh... Put up Meteor Dragon first? But this has to work, right? They have to fuse, okay, good. So, Meteor Black Dragon, fuck yeah! 4,000 attack points with Dragon Treasure, that is some good shit. Thank <laughs> you. 
I may have to cut some of this footage out just so that I don't waste much of your guys' time. Just seeing pumpkin pow my two pumpkins power up by monsters over and over and over again. So I might actually see you guys when I actually have a uh, very strong beat six on my hand, so... Um, I guess I'll go away with the... I guess I'll cut away to when I actually do have what I need. Oh, he's actually moving. Oh, shit. Um, that's kind of bad. Okay, good. He's just setting down another card, so... He would have just activated it directly if it was just, uh, tremendous fire. Oh, shit, he's setting down another card. Okay, I think this is about time I steamroll through this monster lineup. So, stuffed animal, you are about to be fluffed up, I would... I guess I would say. Um, trust me, the pun was worth it. Um, uh, get rid of this manga Reran before it could go back into defense mode. And, okay, if he attacks me it's a Meteor Black Dragon with Paratra- Okay, but that works just the same, because now I can, uh... Because now I can have Meteor Black Dragon go face up and, uh, move two squares to where I can go ahead and take out, uh, Paradragon, so... Yeah, that was kind of long, but, uh, I was able to defeat Pegasus. And you give a bit of a glimpse of, uh, Meteor Black Dragon's, uh, model. But yeah, uh, that's really how you should go about, uh, dueling against Pegasus. And, unfortunately, because some of his cards are so powerful, like, um, since some of his cards are, are so powerful, they don't appear in the graveyard slots. So you can't exactly grind for those cards because of that. Um, basically, if a card has, like, 60 deck costs or over, I believe, then uh, it won't appear in the graveyard slots. So, yeah, that kind of sucks. But I can get a, a, a faceless... Oh, uh, Lucius Faceless Mage, I think it's called. That's basically what his deck leader was. And that's actually a pretty useful card, and I want that. Um, Paradragon the Mop by one. Oh, I got another Sword Stalker, that's nice. Okay. I'm not, I'm not too upset about that. I got another Sword Stalker, I'm pretty happy about that. I honestly probably would have preferred that over Lucius Faceless Mage. So yeah, we defeated Pegasus. Yeah, Pegasus doesn't have a white rose card on him, so... Um, but that does get us to another duelist who has one. And the final of the Rose Crusaders outside of Seto. Uh... Ashizu, or I guess as she's calling this game, Ishtar. Um, yeah, we're going to be facing off against her in the next episode. Uh, so until then, uh, and by the way, I'll have to modify my deck off screen. But until then, take care and goodbye.